there's a brand new cooking competition on TV that I absolutely love, and it's called Top Vegan. What I love about Top Vegan is that it shows how chefs, restaurateurs, food truck owners, and home cooks alike can use YouTube to create their own cooking show and leave the dialogue on food however they see fit. The people behind Top Vegan felt like vegan cooking wasn't getting the visibility that it deserves, so they decided to use YouTube to do something about it. There's a huge lesson there. You do not have to go through the Food Network or any other gatekeepers if you want to have your own cooking show. If you want to lead the dialogue on food, vegan or otherwise, you can do exactly what the Top Vegan team is doing. The market for vegan cuisine is so large and is growing so rapidly that any of the contestants on Top Vegan could host their own cooking show if they wanted, rather than competing on an elimination show. In fact, anyone who applied to be on the show and didn't make the cut could host their own cooking show because YouTube doesn't have an application process. Everybody cannot make the cut to be on Top Vegan. But if you want to have your own cooking show, you can have your own cooking show. And if your cooking show is on YouTube, it's on TV because 47% of people watch YouTube on their television. So if you really want to be a celebrity chef, you can make that happen for yourself. And that's exactly what Chef Eric Ajapon did for himself when the pandemic forced him to close his restaurant. Ajapong offered a lot of cooking classes online during the pandemic. Today we took Chef Eric's class making the jollof risotto. We've taken a lot of cooking classes, but this was hands down the best ever. Here is our final product. We had the best time. Take the class. Yeah. Which allowed more time with his daughter, Lennox. Look at the flick of the wrist. To refine her staple of favorites. Pancake souffles and... I actually did that yesterday. <laughs> Not quite literally. I made a pancake. Oh my God, it's so funny that you said that. What was hard to chew on, losing a concept based on his favorite Caribbean street food called doubles. I did like a whole menu. I had a space open in Washington, D.C. We had the grand opening, we had the date, and then the pandemic happened. So it was a gift and a curse, so to speak. Why a gift and a curse? A curse because at the time, um, I couldn't see the forest through the trees. The blessing of it all is all the things that I did afterwards. If I wasn't able to make the food for the folks in Washington, D.C., why not teach people all over the world how to make the food anyway? And that opened the doors for so many other things. His three degrees in culinary arts and nutrition didn't hurt either. A triple threat he credits with his TV success as contestant. The winner of today's challenge is Eric. Judge. 40 minutes left, guys. 40 minutes. And now host. So without further ado, the Iron Chef herself. A new gig that teams Alex. him with Chef Alex Guernaschelli. I'm putting all my years of reputation on the line, and I wouldn't have it any other way. In Alex versus America. You're like Pat Sajak. I'm doing it all now. It's insane. And I think, again, the pandemic was really that, like, um, I think I feel like life before like BC and AD, like this is like pandemic was really like a, a turning point and so many crazy things that I did not even think of started happening. Um, and I get just the power of saying yes and being at the right place at the right time. Now, instead of being a contestant in cooking competitions, Chef Ajapong is a judge and he's using the celebrity status that he created for himself to open all kinds of other doors and create all kinds of other opportunities. Nisha Vora is another example of how anyone can use YouTube to host your own cooking show. Nisha is a former lawyer turned vegan home cook, and her Rainbow Plants Life YouTube channel has over 1 million subscribers. Like I said, the market for cooking is huge, especially the market for vegan cuisine, and anyone who wants to make money with their own cooking show can do so. You don't have to apply to be on anyone else's platform. The top vegan team didn't need to waste time and money and energy pitching their show to any TV networks. All they had to do was marshal their resources and put their show on YouTube. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot less work than jumping through the hoops of Hollywood. By going the YouTube route, they were completely in control of creating the show that they wanted, which they've done and done extremely well. You can do the same. I want to point out the importance of having a team because this is why most people who have talent worthy of their own cooking show do not have one. Video production is a team sport, and if you try to do it all by yourself, you're pretty much guaranteed to fail. Top Vegan is produced by a production team. Sharon Reed's cooking show that I produce is a much smaller show and is still produced by a team of people, including her staff who helps her prep ingredients prior to recording the episodes. So if you want your own cooking show and you haven't been able to make any progress on it, the question I would ask you is who else is on your team? Because if it's just you, that's why you haven't made any progress.
Your first step should not be pressing record. Your first step should be identifying the first person you need to have on your team and then going out and finding that person. You don't need a bunch of fancy cameras to get started. Your smartphone is fine, but you do need to have somebody on your team besides you. And that's something I can help you with through my cooking all the way to the bank coaching program, where I teach you how to produce your own revenue generating cooking show. And all you need to get started is your smartphone. Just like the top of the line pots and pans are nice to have. But if you know what you're doing, you can cook with whatever pots and pans are available. If you know what you're doing, your smartphone and whatever kitchen you have access to is all you need to get your cooking show started. As long as you have cooking skills and some personality in my cooking all the way to the bank coaching program, I can show you how to start with whatever you have right now and create a cooking show that generates revenue. Whether you want to sell digital cookbooks or you want to increase your profile as a private chef so you can raise your rates. Or maybe you own a restaurant or a food truck and you're trying to grow your business. Being a TV chef with your own cooking show can absolutely help you bring more people to your restaurant or your food truck or your pop-up because if you're on TV, you're a celebrity chef. YouTube is just another channel on TV these days. Remember, 47% of people watch YouTube on their TV. Nobody makes a distinction about what channel you're on. If you're on TV, you're a TV chef and you can use that celebrity status to create whatever opportunities you want for yourself. Let's use Sharon's cooking show as a case study. Rather than a competition, it's an individual cooking show that I record with consumer grade cameras. What you see here is the setup that I use. It's two Fuji X-T3 cameras and an Aperture P60X light. That's really all it takes for us to record a television quality cooking show. The commercial kitchen belongs to Sharon. At the time of this recording, it's been 17 years since Sharon left corporate America behind to start her catering business. She turned an empty warehouse into the commercial kitchen that you see. So all she needed to have her own cooking show was someone to coach her on how to do it, which is where I came in. That's the importance of having a team instead of trying to do everything by yourself. You might have all the ingredients you need and still not be able to produce the results you want because you're trying to do everything by yourself when it's a job that requires a team. I'm going to end this video with one of Sharon's vegan recipes. She's not a vegan, but she knows how to prepare vegan meals because vegan meals are extremely popular with her catering clients. So vegan meals make her money. And now she also makes money by teaching people how to prepare vegan meals. That's how big the opportunity is in the vegan marketplace. You don't even need to be a vegan to make money teaching people how to prepare vegan dishes. If you can, watch the rest of this video on your television and then tell me if you really see any difference between Sharon's cooking show and any other cooking show you've seen on TV. Just realize that this can be you and it's as simple as you getting started by using your smartphone to record yourself cooking and uploading it to YouTube. Hi, we're back cooking with Sharon. And for all of you all that have been asking and wondering, Sharon, when are you going to provide another vegan option? Well, I got you covered. And today we are going to make a beet hummus. Yeah, I know you heard me right. <laughs> Every time that I said to a couple of my friends, um, they always ask, what are you going to make today? And I said, mm, I'm going to make beet hummus. And they're like, beet hummus? Yes, yes, yes. So, okay, the story behind this, the background. So, um, because I probably did the same thing that you all did. You're looking at me like, mm, I don't know about that, Sharon. And actually someone else said, I don't know about that, Sharon, before I started um, filming today. It reminds me of something else. <laughs> But trust me, you're going to enjoy it. So the background is this. So I went away to uh, Arizona to do some spa time and ride my bike. And at the spa, it was a health and wellness spa. And so all the food there you know, was very healthy. And so one of the items when I was taking my mixology class we're going to talk about that that later. I learned how to make up some cool drinks and uh, mm, very flavorful and health. Well, not 100% healthy, but somewhat healthy because of the contents that they put, the, the ingredients. It's all fresh herbs and mm, it was so good. And then, of course, you know, the alcohol on top of that just made it a lot better. So um, during the mixology class, they brought out this hummus and the hummus was purple in color and we are like what is that 
um, it's beet hummus. And I was like, oh gosh, I'm not going to like this. I'm drinking healthy drinks and they're going to bring me out some beet hummus. But surprisingly, it was amazing. And so I said, I probably could duplicate that. You guys know that a lot of the recipes that um, I share with you, I've either had at a restaurant sometimes or I've tried myself and I just wanted to play with it, experiment and make it that much better. So that's what we're going to do today. And so here we, here we are. You see all this goodness on here. A lot of times when you're eating healthy food, all the vibrant colors must be in uh, the place. And as you see here, all the colors are in the place. Uh, I've cut up some fresh, they're rainbow carrots. So you have our traditional orange carrots. There's a yellow carrot. There was a purple carrot. And then I threw in some cucumbers because I love it. And then some radishes. So you see all here, we have um, a wealth of health of health. And with beets, just a little bit of background, then we'll get started. With beets, I don't know if you all knew, but it's a superfood. So superfoods are considered when they are, they exceed the um, amount of vitamins or nutrients that are a part of them. So, you know, we talk about kale, we talk about uh, broccoli, we talk about, um, oh my gosh, there's some others. I can't, I'm, I'm having a brain freeze right now, but beets are part of a superfood group. Um, uh, spinach, kale, all that good stuff. And so today, um, it, they're actually full of folate, um, vitamin B9. They help, they're very, they help, um, uh, with your blood circulation and also with, um, let's see, uh, I said antioxidants. I said heart flow. Look. They're healthy and they're good for you. So I wasn't a fan of beets growing up. My mom loves them. My dad does too. Uh, but I wasn't a fan. So this what what I did here, this is actually a beet, as you all know. Um, I took this earlier today and I actually roasted it. So I took it, I um, cleaned it, of course, uh, kept the skin on, but I put it in the oven in aluminum foil with uh, olive oil and I put a little bit of salt and I roasted it. So this is how it turned out. Once, once it was done, I peeled it, I took the skin off of it, and bam, here we are right now. So we're going to take this beet, and it's best if you have a food processor for this whole process, and uh, food, one of these, we've talked about this before, this is a RoboCoop. I have it here uh, for high duty commercial type uh, preparation, but you can use a, a Ninja if you have at home. You can use a Vitamixer, that'll work too. I think there are like little bullets that you can put your um, drinks in, that'll work. So we have options. So get your um, food processor out. And then I have just regular chickpeas here. I have drained them from the can. Uh, it's one, I actually did two cans because I wanted some extra because I know it's going to be so good and people are going to want some. So I did uh, two cans here and I drained it and I rinsed it. And then as you see, simple ingredients. I have um, minced garlic, fresh garlic cloves. I did about four of them. I have fresh olive oil right here. I have tahini and then I have some garnishes here, some um, that you'll see at the end we're gonna add. So let's get started. I'm gonna take this beet and just cut it up just a little bit more, even though in our food processor, it'll break down, but just so it's not as long of a process. So we'll just put these in here and then um, start our food processor or whatever device that you have. And we want it. It's not going to take too, too long, but we want it um, as a smooth texture, but we're going to continue to add in all of our other ingredients. Okay, so we're going to add in our chickpeas. Hopefully they don't roll all away. <laughs> um, and you may need to stop it at certain point to scrape the sides. All right, so just so it can all mix consistently. Ooh, and that is coming a nice rich color. 
All right. We're gonna take um, this lemon that I've kind of pre-rolled. We're gonna cut it in half and add in the juice. You may have at home like a juicer or one that, make sure the seeds don't go in. We're just gonna add it in just like that. Make sure the seeds don't go. But half of the lemon, actually I may put in a little bit more. We'll taste it. Okay, it's mixing up very nicely. We're just gonna continue to add in all of our ingredients. So tahini, it's about two tablespoons. And tahini is really just sesame seeds in the liquid form. All right, we're gonna put in our garlic. And the last thing we wanna to add to this while it's blending is gonna be our olive oil, but before we do that, we'll add in a little bit of pepper and salt. About a half a teaspoon to start off. Okay, let me just get scrape the sides. It's looking really good. And again, vibrant in color. Ooh, I'm loving this. Okay, so the last thing, like I said, we're going to add is our olive oil. Extra version, you want to make sure you have that. Okay, I'm just gonna taste it because it may need a little bit more salt or pepper. Mm. No, it doesn't. It's tasting really good, but I'm gonna add in just a little bit more um, lemon zest or lemon juice actually fresh. Make sure you don't get those seeds in. Mm. Okay, I'm excited. All right, so let me try it one last time. Mm. Okay, so we're pretty much done, except we need to plate up or serve up. So I just have a little scooper here and just a bowl. I mean, you can kind of um, present how you want, but I'm gonna take, the reason why I cut these vegetables is I'm gonna cut and um, put it in a bowl, present it in a bowl. And you can do this for your guest um, or not. You just want it just like that. And then we're just going to take and add some color, some other color to this. And, oh yeah. And this would be like an appetizer maybe for two. We got all these dipping options. And then I have pistachios right here. I'm just going to put a little, I've chopped them up. I'm going to chop them up just a little bit more. Um, we're going to add those uh, as a little bit of garnish. And it's kind of, oh my gosh, it's kind of like giving me um, like an ice cream, like raspberry sorbet or something. But trust me, trust me, this is really good. And what? It's healthy, it's gluten-free, it's vegan. So we're checking all the boxes here. 
All right. And then last but not least, we'll just add in just for a little bit more color and health, some beans, some bean sprouts. So, wow. I mean, wasn't that so simple and easy? Yes, and it looks so good. So for your next um, home event or, you know, uh, any type of uh, party, ooh, you know what? I'm going to show you all something else, uh, maybe in a picture. But we could put these in little shooter cups, and uh, they would make for a great pass hors d'oeuvre. So many options here, healthy, easy, and good. So until the next time, we'll see you at Cooking with Sharon. Thanks. After seeing Sharon's cooking show, tell me what part of that you think you cannot do. And if you say, yeah, you could do it too if you had help. Well, duh, that's the point. That's exactly what I've been telling you in this video. If you're trying to do a cooking show by yourself, you are almost guaranteed to fail. So if you've seen the light and now you're ready to start putting together a team to help you produce your cooking show, use the link in the description box to schedule your cooking show strategy session. Also, check out the article I wrote about Top Vegan that I'll link in the description box because in that article, I go into some more detail. And be sure to subscribe to the Top Vegan channel because they're doing fantastic work and showing you what the future of food TV is. You can be a part of that future as soon as you decide to. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.